Welcome to another video tutorial about CS4 products. Right now I'm looking at Premiere Pro CS4 and I'm looking at some video footage that I've used After Effects to create a red following path of this bowling ball. Someone has specifically asked for how this might be done. It's fairly straightforward if you can see it but it's kind of tricky to explain in words. So first thing you want to do is have your material. So now what I'm going to do is send this over to After Effects. Now I've already got After Effects open in the background here, so it should just send it straight there. Now I am using the Master Collection here. If you had Premiere Pro CS4 on its own and After Effects on its own, then the dynamic link which is what this replace with After Effects composition is using, is not effective. So you need Production Premium or Master Collection. Right, so once I replace with After Effects, it's going to send it off to After Effects and find all the composition details from the material that I've sent, and it will sort it all out for me and replace that particular edit with the composition from After Effects using Dynamic Link. So I've got to name this project. I've got it open, but I haven't named it yet. So I need to name this, let's call it Bowling Ball Path Tutorial, and as we can see here, it's now got a linked comp there. The audio is still there, but the vision has been replaced with a composition from After Effects. So when I make changes in After Effects, it automatically updates here in Premiere Pro. So what I've got is three separate items here. Now I don't want to have these three separate items. Now if I look closely I can see I've got one for vision and I've got two separate ones for audio and that's because the audio had been separated in the edit. So I'm just going to remove the two audio ones and just keep my vision. Now I just want to pull all the way out here so I can see my entire timeline. Now what I'm going to do before I start looking at the actual timing of things is add a new solid and I'm going to choose red and then I'm going to stick it underneath so I'm just going to drag it and drop it underneath my material now while that's still selected I'm going to grab this pen tool up here and I'm going to make sure that I've got this Rotobezia ticked what that does is it creates curves for you using the mask path pen tool. Now I'm going to look at where the ball actually hits the ground and I think it's about there. I'll just move one frame at a time. Yep, that's where the ball hits. So at this point in time I want to, and I'll zoom right on in here, and I'm just going to use scroll up to get there, find the center of this ball. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the in point of that over to that point in time as well. So now I need to find where the ball hits, and it's about there, we'll go back a couple of frames, yep, that one, bang, and the ball's hit it. So just before it hits it will be the end of the path of the ball before it strikes the pins. So now I need to zoom right on in at that point as well, and find the center of the ball. Now what's happened is this particular item should have connected, but it hasn't gone and created two paths and that's because I went and unselected something. Now this is something that may occur and just it's good that mistakes happen on these things because then I can show you how to fix them or why they have happened. So what I'm going to do is at some point I've deselected what I was doing uh, with that particular path and it may have been when I went over to the preview. So what I'm going to do is select mask 2 and delete it and with mask 1 definitely select it. I'll hold my control key just so then I get a square, like a little square icon to indicate that that has been selected and I'm going to add to that path up here and now it's created the path for me. The path shouldn't exist until that point in time which I've moved the in point of the playhead and then once it reaches the end it will stay there so I'm leaving the out right until the end. Now we need to work out where the middle section of this is. The middle section is where the ball is at its most curved part of its path. So I'm just going to move along here. Uh, I can see it's roughly there. Now 
you don't have to get too exact. I'm going to go with that point there. While I've still got my pen tool, I move over to over the top of the line and I get a little plus next to the icon. I click on that and what it does is it adds another vertex to the path. If I want to move that vertex, I can use my arrow keys to do it. Or I can hold control or Apple on the Mac and move it myself that way. And notice how it's created this curve for me. That curve is based on the fact that we're using this Rotobezier. Now the curve is going to be close, but it's not going to be exact. So let's just keep moving along in time and try and work out where the path might not follow the center of the ball. Now it seems to be pretty good there. Still pretty good but it's about here and about halfway through I'm going to add another vertex so make sure I get that plus hold my control key on Windows or Mac you will hold the Apple key and get that center of the ball moving back it still looks like it's running through the center of the ball there it's probably not so much so I might just add another one and just nudge that into the center there and just check that that actually does follow the center of the ball pretty good now I've noticed there it's not following the center too well so you can get very very detailed and you can see how easy it is to create an easy path for that and get the curve just right when you watch it in play in real time it's probably going to look pretty good even though there might only be a couple of points instead of having five or six. So now what we need to do is go to the effects and presets and type in the word stroke. Now the effect we're looking for is called stroke. It's under generate. We add that to the red solid. It will create a path based on the mask that we created using the pen tool and it's automatically understood there was a mask involved and it's added to that mask the stroke itself. So because it's underneath our vision we're not going to see anything so I'm going to just drop it up and we can see now we've got the red background and we've got this white path. Now it's tricky to see because we've got the toggle mask on so we turn it off and we can see a white path. If we make the brush size bigger the path gets bigger. Now why have I gone with red? Well, I've gone with red because in this paint style I want to reveal the original image. So what I want to do is just make sure that this path is not sitting over the top of the guy so harshly and I can change this mode of how we're looking at the footage from normal over to multiply and suddenly it looks like it's embedded in the clip itself. So let's just check and watch how the red path and the ball follow each other pretty good and it's actually a pretty good sense of the path of the ball. Now I'm going to make this brush size just a little bit skinnier to about four and I can see now that there's probably a little bit of a wiggle that I need to make on the path there. So I'll turn back on the toggle to see the mask and I'll go back to my pen tool get the little plus and nudge that over and that looks like that's following the path pretty good now so if we want to watch it in real time I suggest you use the RAM preview button the zero key on the number lock part of the keyboard is also the shortcut to do that now that looks pretty good that's playing back in real time now and that looks like that path is excellent. Now how do we make the path follow the ball? Well, let's start with the beginning of our layer and if you hold shift as you move your playhead over it gets close to the in point and it should snap. Now what I want to do is change the ending. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch to begin an animation of the ending of the length of the mask that we've made and I'm going to change that value from 100 which is, says that it goes all the way to the end so we've got a, an entire length of our path and set it to zero and when I do the red line goes away. Now I'll turn off my toggle to see the path of the mask and I will from here go to animation reveal animating properties shortcut is the letter U and 
let's move along to the end of the path, which should be about here. Let's just check. The skittle gets hit. We go back one more. And now I'm going to change that value to 100. Now when I change the value here, because the value's changed, it will add another keyframe automatically and we'll see the result down here. So we've got the value at zero and then it grows to be the value of 100. Now the timing of this is not correct, so we're going to have to go through and just sort of toggle the amount of where that actual path lines up with growing with the ball position. So I'm going to do this in sort of halfway points. So halfway between these two keyframes, I'm going to just sort of find that halfway point and I'm just going to move the value here. I could use it up here, but because I want to see how my values change directly where my keyframes go, as I move that up, I can see that it's now reached the tip of the ball. And again, I'll move into about halfway mark there and just add a little bit more and we'll see how that goes to the very end and it looks like it's followed pretty good. Right, so let's check this halfway point here. Now we can't really check because the guy's head is in the way. How do we check it? Well, we zoom right on in and then we turn off the multiply and make it normal, we can see it because now the multiply is not going with the darkness of the guy's head. We can see where it should be on the center of the ball and we found a new value there. So now, I'd say putting this back to multiply, zooming out, and we'll just see how that all looks, and you know what, I reckon it looks pretty darn good. That follows great, and we're done. So a quick RAM preview, and we can see that path follows the ball, and now we can see how the ball actually curves when trying to instruct people on how bowling and spin work and the direction of the ball. Let's go back to Premiere quickly and we can see that this bit of footage is now updated with that path that we created. All very good. So then all we want to do, it's already part of an edit, we'll just render it all out from here.